I should have known something thing was wrong the moment Bennett suggested a family dinner with his mother Geraldine. Those two despised each other more than anything. The only reason they were ever in the same room was to gang up on me. It will be nice to have some quality family time, Bennett said with a sickly sweet smile that immediately set off alarm bells. Geraldine just nodded along, her thin lips pursed like she had sucked on a lemon. I fought the urge to protest as Bennett hustled me and our eight-year-old daughter Jenna out the door and into his car. The drive over to Geraldine's place was silent and tense. Jenna, sensing the weird vibes, just stared out the window at the passing scenery. When we arrived, Geraldine pulled me aside in the kitchen while Bennett played the doting dad with Jenna in the living room. I'm worried about you, dear, Geraldine said, her tone a horrible attempt at warmth. Bennett says you've been acting quite erratic lately, forgetful, making bad financial decisions. I opened my mouth to object, but Geraldine kept talking over me in that shrill, condescending tone of hers. He's told me all about the issues with your family's inheritance, how you've been very resistant to his attempts to sort it out. My stomach clenched as she mentioned the inheritance my grandparents had left me and my siblings, a decent nest egg that Bennett had been ultra-focused on for the past few months. I started to sense where this was going. We're just concerned about your mental well-being is all, Geraldine continued, placing a bony hand on my arm that I immediately shrugged off. Bennett thinks it might be best if you allowed him and I to take over the inheritance matters. We could. Don't you dare try to take me for a fool, I spat, unable to hide my rage and disgust any longer. I know exactly what's going on here. This little dinner, this pathetic act, it's all because you two have been conspiring to steal my inheritance behind my back. Geraldine's face went from fake sugary sweet to sour in an instant. Now you listen to me, you ungrateful little... But I was already pushing past her into the living room, where Bennett sat with a confused look on his face. Get your stuff, Jenna. We're leaving right now, I announced, my voice quivering with anger and betrayal. Bennett stood up, putting his arm around me in a useless attempt at reassurance. Marla, honey, calm down. Let's not ruin a nice family evening with— Save it, I shouted, shoving his arm off me. I heard everything from the kitchen. I know what you two have been up to, conniving to take my inheritance. Out of the corner of my eye I saw poor Jenna cowering on the couch, eyes wide with fear and confusion. It broke my heart, but I was too furious to put on a reassuring face. Marla, you're being hysterical, Bennett said through gritted teeth, his fake, concerned husband mask slipping. Let's not do anything rash here. The only rash thing I've done is trusted you snakes, I shot back. I grabbed Jenna's hand and pulled her off the couch, hurrying us both towards the door as Geraldine and Bennett's voices overlapped with pathetic denials and pleas. I wasn't listening anymore. As we burst out onto the street, I was already formulating my plan. Those two wanted to play dishonest games and try to take what was rightfully mine? Fine. From here on out, I would be watching their every move, gathering all the evidence I would need to expose them and make them pay for their betrayal. It was the only way I would be able to win this war they had brought into my home, and I didn't intend to lose. The rage simmering inside me kept me awake long into the night after the disastrous dinner at Geraldine's. I tossed and turned beside Bennett's snoring form, my mind racing over all the times he and his vile mother had likely been mocking me behind my back and plotting to rob me blind. As the gray light of dawn seeped through the curtains, I found myself getting quietly dressed and creeping out of the bedroom. I needed to start collecting evidence of their deceit before Bennett and Geraldine tried covering their tracks. In the home office, I booted up Bennett's computer and started digging through his emails, documents, web history, anything that could provide a link to their schemes regarding my inheritance money. I typed furiously, copying incriminating messages and financial records into a new encrypted folder. What are you doing? I nearly jumped out of my skin at the sound of Bennett's groggy voice behind me. He squinted suspiciously at the computer screen over my shoulder. Nothing, I lied, quickly minimizing the windows, just catching up on some work emails. At 5 a.m. on a Saturday? He raised an eyebrow. I shrugged, keeping my expression neutral. You know how dedicated I am. Right. 
Bennett said slowly, clearly not buying it. Well, I'm making breakfast if you want. That's okay, I cut him off, rising stiffly from the chair. I'm actually heading into the office for a bit. I've got a big project I want to spend some time on. The lie came easier than I expected. I just hoped Bennett couldn't see the deception burning in my eyes as I brushed past him out of the room. Over the next few weeks, I became a master of covering my tracks and putting on an Oscar-worthy performance. Every minute Bennett and I weren't at work, I was secretly documenting his and Geraldine's misdeeds and stashing away the evidence where they'd never find it. I installed hidden cameras and microphones all over the house to catch their conspiracy conversations. I scanned boxes of old files and records any time they left me alone. I subscribed to fancy data storage services with multi-level encryption to back everything up remotely where they couldn't get to it. Keeping up the charade of being a happy, oblivious wife and mother to poor Jenna was the hardest part. My heart broke a little more each time Bennett or Geraldine would make snide comments in front of her about me being ditzy or incompetent. I could only imagine the vile things they'd been telling her about me in private, poisoning her against her own mother. "'Why doesn't Grandma like you?' Jenna asked me one evening while I helped her with her math homework. I almost lost it right there at the despair and confusion in her sweet voice. Instead, I forced a smile and hugged her tight. "'Oh, sweetie, it's complicated, with grown-ups. But you don't need to worry about any of that, okay?' Jenna frowned, clearly not satisfied, but nodded. In that moment, I swore to myself that no matter what happened, I would get her away from the toxic influence of Bennett and Geraldine before it was too late. "'You're being so paranoid and emotional lately, Marla,' Bennett tutted after one of my private phone calls with my lawyer friend Donovan, shaking his head with mock sympathy. "'I'm starting to genuinely worry about your mental state.' I bit back the hundreds of venomous responses I wanted to scream at him. Now wasn't the time. I needed to keep playing the role of the meek, unaware wife a little while longer. Not until I had everything I needed to bring the whole damn house down on his scheming head. As the weeks rolled on, the evidence piled up higher and higher. Records of Bennett siphoning money out of my inheritance accounts. Emails between him and Geraldine discussing plans to have me evaluated and declared incompetent. GPS data tracking their underhanded meetings and so much more. Every day, their disgusting betrayal was clearer. I could feel the karma deepening for them with each new vile transgression I uncovered, and when I finally had what I needed, they would reap what they'd sown. That was a promise. Things took an even darker turn a few months after the horrible night at Geraldine's house. My facade of being a happily oblivious wife and mother was getting harder to maintain as Bennett and his mother ramped up the cruel mind games. You want to be careful with your spending, dear, Bennett said over breakfast one morning, eyeing me with fake concern as I poured my coffee. I'm afraid you haven't been managing our finances too well lately. I shot him a look but stayed silent and continued eating. Don't take the bait, I told myself. Don't give them the satisfaction. In fact, he continued, an oily smirk creeping across his face. Mother and I were just discussing maybe taking over the household accounts for a while— at least until you get your scattered brain back in order. My fork stopped midway to my mouth as I processed his words. Excuse me? Well, you have been terribly forgetful in making poor decisions, Geraldine cut in, patting my hand in a sickening grandmotherly way. We're just worried about you, that's all. I jerked my hand away from her bony grasp in revulsion. I don't need you two idiots monitoring my every move under the guise of concern— I'm doing just fine handling things myself. Bennett clucked his tongue, shaking his head. There's no need to get defensive, Marla. We're simply trying to help relieve your burdens while you get your head on straight. I didn't ask for your damn help, I snapped, the anger suddenly boiling over. And I sure as hell don't need my moronic excuse for a husband and his gremlin mother trying to take control of my life. Jenna froze in her chair at the sharpness of my tone, her eyes going wide. The wounded look on her sweet face hit me hard, but not as hard as what Bennett said next. My, no wonder your own parents took off and left you with strangers to raise. His lips curled in a cruel smile as I flinched. With an unstable attitude like that, who could blame them? 
my pulse was thundering in my ears as a wave of white-hot humiliation washed over me. I stood up so abruptly, my chair skidded back on the hardwood with a screech. You smug, ugly son of a bitch! Whoa, whoa! Geraldine screeched, jumping up and positioning herself between Bennett and me, like I was about to throw a punch. Is this any way to behave in front of the child? The vein in her forehead throbbed as she gestured wildly towards Jenna, who was huddled in terror by this point. I felt a pang of shame, at the same time as a towering, righteous fury towards Bennett and his evil mother. You're going to terrify that sweet girl, Geraldine sneered, her voice dripping with condescension. What kind of sicko traumatizes their own kid like that? That was it. I couldn't take another second of their hateful presence. I stormed away from the table, bumping roughly against both of their shoulders as I went. I heard Geraldine squawk in outrage, but didn't pause or look back. Moments later, I was outside with the front door slammed behind me. Shaking with rage, I leaned back against the siding, breathing hard when I heard the sounds of soft crying drifting from Jenna's open bedroom window above. My heart shattered all over again as it really hit me. Not only were Bennett and Geraldine trying to rob me blind financially, but they were poisoning my baby against me with their wicked lies and manipulation, turning her against her own loving mother. I closed my eyes, feeling the weight of true despair descend over me. What a mess I'd gotten us into by marrying into this family of scumbags. For Jenna's sake, I should have gotten us both out of there the second I discovered their schemes. But I was in too deep now, blinded by a thirst for vengeance on the monsters who betrayed us. As I replayed the crushing scene from this morning over in my mind, I vowed that from here on out, I wouldn't let Bennett and Geraldine break me down, no matter how cruelly they tried to provoke me. From here on out, I would hit back harder than ever before. It was the only way to finally, truly protect Jenna and burn those twisted sociopaths' whole pathetic world to the ground. After the disastrous breakfast blow-up, I found myself driving aimlessly around town just to get away from that toxic house and the poisonous influences of Bennett and Geraldine. My hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly that my knuckles turned white as the confrontation played over and over in my mind. I needed to talk to someone about this escalating situation before I did something rash that I might regret preferably someone who could give me professional legal advice on how to handle the scheming snakes trying to rob me blind. My friend Donovan's face flashed in my mind. The quick-witted law school buddy who had helped me out of a few jams back in our starving student days. Despite now working at a fancy corporate firm, he always made time for me when I really needed an ear or assistance. I hid his number on my hands-free car speaker before I could second-guess myself. Well, well, if it isn't my favorite accountant calling out of the blue. Donovan's jovial voice crackled over the line. What fresh hell has the world of high finance cooked up for you this time? Can you meet me for coffee? Like right now? I blurted out, realizing how frazzled I sounded. It's, it's important. There was a brief pause. Then Donovan's tone turned serious. Everything okay, Marla? Not really, I admitted thickly, feeling tears starting to well up. My deadbeat husband and his succubus mother have been plotting to steal my inheritance and manipulate me into handing it over. Things are escalating fast. Jesus, Donovan muttered, anger creeping into his voice. Okay, give me twenty minutes to wrap up what I'm working on. I'll meet you at that cafe by my office. We can talk it all through. True to his word, Donovan was at the cafe within the half hour, trademark messy hair and lopsided grin firmly in place as he slid into the booth across from me. Lay it all out for me, Ace. What kind of shady games are Bennett and the Wicked Witch playing at? I spent the next hour recounting everything. The initial revelation about the inheritance scheme, catching their conspiratorial conversations on tape, their escalating mind games and cruel psychological torment. Donovan's easygoing expression turned more grave with each ugly detail I revealed. "'And you have solid evidence backing all this up?' he asked seriously when I finished. "'Documentation, recordings, everything?' I patted the secure drive I'd brought containing my meticulously gathered insurance files. "'Everything. I've been like a secret agent these past few months, watching their every move.' Donovan shook his head in a blend of amazement and saddened disappointment. 
I never liked that sleazy dirt merchant Bennett, but I didn't think he'd stoop this low, and he's dragging his poor old bat of a mother into his cesspool with him. He fixed me with an intense look, all traces of joviality gone. Marla, you gotta get out of there. Get yourself and Jenna away from those toxic liars before they really ramp up the manipulation further and do some irreparable damage. I nodded somberly. I know. Believe me, I do. I've been holding out to gather enough proof to bury them in court, but... I trailed off, my voice wavering as I thought about my sweet little girl stuck in the same hell I was. Donovan reached across the able, clasping my hand firmly. We just need to make sure you have everything locked down so that when you file for divorce, he can't fight you on anything, he said, calm and reassuring. We go for full custody of Jenna and make sure you get what's yours from the inheritance, plus plenty of assets as compensation for their fraud and harassment. Despite the gravity of the situation, I felt a glimmer of hope at his words and rock-steady confidence. Maybe bringing in the legal big guns was the solution I needed. Will you take my case? I asked tentatively. I mean, I know it'll mean you're going up against your own firm since Bennett works there, but... Donovan waved me off dismissively. Screw those corporate drones. They can take whatever conflict of interest fine I get. When one of my true friends is getting screwed over by scumbags, you know I'll go to the mat for them. He gave my hand another reassuring squeeze. After everything you've been through, it's the least I can do to make sure you and Jenna finally get the justice you deserve. After my meeting with Donovan... I tried to keep a lower profile around Bennett and Geraldine while gathering the last pieces of evidence I needed. With Donovan's guidance, I was preparing to hit them with the divorce and custody filings soon. But those two clearly sensed something was up with me. They ramped up their twisted little mind games to try cracking my emotionless facade. Honestly, Marla, this sullen, moody act of yours is getting quite tiresome. Geraldine snipped one evening as we all watched TV together, putting on a saccharine, sweet, grandmotherly tone. When are you going to snap out of this funk and return to your usual cheerful self? I kept my eyes glued to the screen, not deigning to respond. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see Bennett smirking beside his foul mother. Perhaps some professional help is in order? Geraldine prodded, not put off by my silence. You know, to get you assessed for... issues? I'd be more than happy to refer you to an excellent psychiatrist I know. My grip tightened on the couch armrest until my knuckles turned white. She was blatantly suggesting having me evaluated and declared mentally incompetent so they could take over my affairs, the final despicable piece of their twisted scheme. Bennett leaned over, putting his hand over mine with a feigned caring expression. Now, dear, Mother's just trying to help however she can. This gloomy, suspicious attitude of yours has us very worried about your state of min. I flung his hand off me with disgust. Actually, the only thing I need professional help with is finding a good divorce lawyer. I snarled, holding Geraldine's gaze to witness the shock and rage blooming across her features. One who can help me take your conniving son for everything he's worth and get far, far away from this miserable family. Bennett's mocking smile vanished like I'd slapped it off his face. "'What are you talking about?' he sputtered as I rose from the couch, towering over them both. "'Where is this insanity coming from? "'Don't play dumb. "'I've known about your pathetic little scheme to steal my inheritance for months now,' I shot back, relishing his widening eyes of panic. "'And I have more than enough proof of your deceitful, manipulative behavior to bury you both in any court.' Geraldine shot upright her cool composure shattered. How dare you make such outrageous accusations, she screeched in that shrill, grating tone of hers that could curdle milk. You're clearly in the throes of some mental deficiency, too. Save the gaslighting, old woman. I cut her off, feeling a surge of adrenaline and righteous fury. Your twisted little con game is over. I'm taking my daughter and getting away from you poisonous snakes once and for all. With that, I turned on my heel and stormed from the room, leaving the pair of them goggling speechlessly in my wake. Over the next few days, Donovan helped me compile all the documentation and prep the necessary paperwork for the big custody and divorce filings. I relished every second of building the case, feeling more and more vindicated with each shred of damning evidence we laid out. At last, 
everything was set. Armed with the thick folder of intel that would dismantle Bennett and Geraldine's lives, I strode out of Donovan's office and headed to the courthouse with my head held high. It was like a rebirth walking through those big wooden doors, filled with the knowledge I was about to blow their slimy scheme wide open and fight for mine and Jenna's freedom. I wish I could have seen the looks on those scheming bastards' faces when they got served the divorce and custody papers. Mere hours later, sitting across from a flabbergasted Bennett at Donovan's firm, his former colleagues rapidly losing respect for him by the minute, I allowed myself a small smile of satisfaction. It was finally happening. The wheels of justice were in motion to punish these depraved con artists who tormented my family for far too long. No more lies, no more manipulation, only the cold hard truth of the consequences for their abhorrent betrayal. This is madness. Bennett blubbered, the color draining from his face as he flipped through the thick folder detailing all the evidence stacked against him and his wretched mother. You have no proof, no grounds for— Might want to save your breath for someone who still buys your bullshit, Donovan interjected coolly, sliding another stack of printouts across the table. Because these financial records, recorded conversations, and legal documents all say otherwise. I stayed silent knowing nothing I said would make Bennett see the light after how thoroughly he'd allowed greed and malice to warp his morals. All I cared about now was making sure he and Geraldine paid the full price for the hell they'd put me and Jenna through. When Jenna was finally freed from their toxic web of lies and deceit, that's when I would find true peace and healing. Until then, this hard-won, karma-fueled fight was just getting started. With the custody and divorce filings officially submitted, all hell broke loose. It was like Bennett and Geraldine could sense the tides turning against them and launched into full-blown panic mode. This is outrageous, Geraldine. Geraldine shrilled into the phone when I informed her of the legal proceedings over a voicemail. You can't be serious with these absurd allegations and demands. It's all right there in the paperwork, clearly laid out, I replied evenly reveling in her sputtering outrage. I have all the evidence and documentation needed to dismantle your sad little grifter scheme. You entitled, delusional little witch, she raged on the other end of the line. My son has bent over backwards providing for you and that brat child of yours, and this is how you repay him? I rolled my eyes, unmoved by her attempts at gaslighting, by uncovering and putting a stop to his illegal efforts to steal from me? You're damn right. But please, keep digging that hole deeper for yourself. We're going to fight this with everything we have. Geraldine's voice was climbing hysterically higher. You'll be lucky if you're allowed supervised visitation with Jenna once we prove what an unstable deranged. Click. I ended the call abruptly, no longer having the patience or desire to engage with her unhinged ranting. She could prattle on all she wanted— it wouldn't change the fact that we were in possession of the receipts, financial and otherwise, proving her and Bennett's deceit. Well? Donovan asked as I slid my phone back into my pocket. How'd it go informing the wicked witch of our legal crusade? About as well as expected, I smirked, taking a sip of the coffee he'd brought to his office for our meeting. She's already melting down and making outrageous threats about trying to take Jenna, like that's going to happen after what they put my baby through. Donovan's face darkened. Those two are in for a very rude awakening if they pursue that angle about your mental fitness. I've got a whole file's worth of third-party accounts and evidence definitively disproving any of that noise. He gestured to the thick manila folder on his desk emblazoned confidential. Teachers, daycare staff, neighbors, co-workers, everyone who's had regular positive interactions with you and Jenna— if Bennett and Mom Dearest try painting you as some unfit psycho parent, it'll just blow up in their smug faces. I felt a small swell of gratitude hearing him lay it all out. Donovan was really going to war for me in making sure those conniving assholes got what they deserved. Just wait until we enter all those recorded convos and incriminating texts into evidence, I replied with grim satisfaction. No judge is going to hear Geraldine casually referring to Jenna as that brat and think she has our daughter's best interests at heart. Donovan chuckled darkly. Seriously, your foresight in documenting all their shady moves was clutch, 
we've got this whole case on lockdown, no matter how dirty they want to try playing. He was interrupted by a sharp knock at the door. One of the paralegals stuck their head in, looking rather uncomfortable. Sorry to disturb, but... Bennett Miller is here? He's demanding to see you about an urgent personal matter. Right on cue, the smarmy snake himself appeared, shoving his way past the paralegal into Donovan's office with his typical audacious swagger. You son of a bitch, he roared immediately upon seeing me, his face flushed a blotchy crimson. How dare you try to carry out this pathetic little stunt against me and my family? I quirked a single eyebrow, completely unfazed by his bluster. That's no way to greet the mother of your child in a professional setting, Bennett. Oh, cut the self-righteous bullshit, he spat, slamming his hands down on Donovan's desk hard enough to rattle everything on its surface. I know you've been conniving and plotting this whole divorce ambush for months now behind my back. Donovan cleared his throat warningly. I'd be very careful about the accusations you make in this office, Miller, especially given the hard proof we've compiled about your own underhanded actions and intent. Bennett whirled on him, eyes wild and bugged out like a cornered animal. Is that what she's been telling you, Donovan? Spinning her twisted stories about me and Mom trying to manipulate her somehow? Enough of this, Bennett. I cut back in sharply. I'll feeling my own anger rising at his pathetically desperate feigned ignorance. We have concrete, undeniable proof of you two hatching plans to defraud and gaslight me out of my inheritance money. It's all right here. I thumped my hand down on the damning evidence folder in front of him. Bennett recoiled almost comically as if it were a venomous snake about to strike. Those are barefaced lies and you know it, he shouted spit flying from his mouth as his face contorted with rage. You're just looking to turn everyone against me out of your own selfish greed. Selfish greed? I scoffed, almost unable to believe he was trying to turn this around on me after everything. That's rich coming from a lowlife trying to embezzle from his own wife. You make me sick. Before Donovan or I could say anything else, Bennett let out an incoherent roar of fury and suddenly seized a heavy crystal paperweight from the desk, raising it high above his head, as if to bring it crashing down on mine. Whoa, whoa! Donovan bellowed, lurching in front of me with his hands raised defensively as Bennett raged with wild eyes. Put that down right now, before you do something unforgivable here. After Bennett's unhinged outburst in Donovan's office, an uneasy calm settled over the next few weeks as we awaited the initial court dates. Geraldine suddenly went radio silent, likely rethinking her previous strategy of hurling juvenile insults and threats my way. I could only imagine the panicked strategizing happening between her and her equally cornered son behind closed doors. On the other side, Donovan and I continued steadily compiling even more evidence and testimonies to mount an airtight custody case ensuring Jenna stayed firmly in my care, far away from their toxic influences. My heart ached whenever I saw the toll their escalating mind games had taken on my sweet girl's psyche. "'Why does Daddy hate you so much?' she asked me one evening, as we cuddled on the couch watching cartoons, a welcome temporary refuge from the family drama. I hugged her small frame tight against me, struggling against a surge of tears. "'Oh, sweetie, Daddy doesn't hate me.' Not really. He's just very angry and confused about some grown-up things right now. Jenna frowned, clearly not satisfied with that explanation. But why does he have to be so mean all the time? And why does Grandma call you those awful names when she thinks I can't hear? My jaw clenched at that. So the truth was, Jenna had already been exposed to far more of their venom and manipulation than I'd realized. A renewed sense of determination to protect her welled up inside me. Listen to me, I said firmly, tilting her small face up so our eyes met. No matter what happens, no matter what anyone says, I will always, always love you more than anything. You're my whole world, Jenna. Please never doubt that. Her small brow crinkled, but she nodded solemnly. In that moment, I silently rededicated myself to ensuring those twisted, evil con artists could never again poison her mind against her own mother. No more deceptions. No more abuse. Things were about to change. A few days later, I was scheduled to bring Jenna with me for a court-ordered child interview, one of the first big preliminary hearings that would ultimately decide her custodial fate. 
Donovan had been fully preparing us both, advising Jenna to simply be herself and tell the truth about anything she was asked regarding her home life and family relationships. Just remember, sweet pea, this isn't about getting anyone in trouble, okay? He told her kindly as we waited in the courthouse anteroom. It's just about making sure you get to live in the best, healthiest environment possible, one without people treating you badly or lying to you. Jenna nodded, her small legs kicking back and forth anxiously in the big leather chair she was dwarfed by. She looked so small and fragile in that cold, intimidating room of wood paneling and legal volumes. I laid a reassuring hand on her shoulder, giving it a gentle squeeze as the court advisor arrived. "'You've got this, baby girl,' I whispered, forcing a brave smile as she was led away behind those imposing wooden doors. "'Everything's going to be just fine.' It seemed like an eternity went by until Jenna finally reemerged, her eyes slightly red, but with a ghost of a smile playing on her lips when she saw me. My heart leapt as I scooped her up, giddy with a sense of hope and pride. I knew in that moment, whatever she'd relayed to the court about our home life, she had handled it with courage and honesty. Two things that venomous snake Bennett could never comprehend, let alone instill in another human being. My faith in her was rewarded a couple of weeks later during the next big pre-trial hearing, the first major custody arguments and rulings. Geraldine was snarling and gesticulating wildly as her lawyer argued I was an unfit parent with clear mental deficiencies who shouldn't be allowed unsupervised time with poor, pitiful Jenna. Your Honor, it's the sad truth that my client's soon-to-be ex has become completely unmoored from any sense of reason or reality. The shriveled reptilian little man droned on in that trademark soulless attorney's drone. Her increasingly unbalanced condition poses a clear danger to their daughter's well-being. I braced myself for impact, ready for whatever ridiculous fabrications and lies they tried twisting to discredit my mental state and mothering abilities. But Donovan just checked his watch, seemingly unfazed. Better tee it up quickly for your deranged rants, he muttered under his breath beside me, because you're about to get shut down hard in about thirty seconds. True to his prediction, the judge held up her hand after only a couple more minutes, silencing Geraldine's screeching monkey lawyer mid-sentence. With all due respect, Counselor, I've presided over more than enough of these custody battles to see through most of the traditional mudslinging ploys, she said, voice cutting and sharp. So unless you have some hard evidence to present substantiating this, doozy of a claim about the mother's incompetence, I'd suggest you wrap it up. Geraldine audibly ground her teeth beside her attorney, her face flushed puce with rage, as he began stammering and shuffling through his notes fruitlessly. But the judge was already moving on, making some notes before clearing her throat again. Now then, based on the overwhelmingly positive testimony from teachers, child care workers, medical professionals, and others in regards to Mrs. Wilkins' ability as a devoted and caring parent as well as the extremely disturbing recorded statements from Mrs. Miller referring to the child as that brat and other unsavory language. She leveled a hard stare at a suddenly pale, sputtering Geraldine before continuing. I am issuing a preliminary ruling fully maintaining Mrs. Wilkins' full custodial rights over the couple's daughter Jenna for the time being while these divorce proceedings play out. Visitation rights for Mr. Miller will be restricted and requiring a professional supervisor until I've had a chance to more thoroughly review additional evidence regarding his personal fitness and legal culpability. It was like the entire room had been struck by a colossal shockwave. Geraldine's mouth opened and closed wordlessly, looking ready to detonate as her lawyer patted her arm in a fruitless attempt at comfort. Beside me, Donovan was doing a little celebratory fist pump, beaming like a lottery winner. I could only just sit there in stunned silence, trying to process this first big victory after months of anguish. But then I saw my sweet Jenna in the aisle, radiant and glowing and giving me a double thumbs up of support, and the stranglehold of tension utterly released inside me, washing away in a tidal wave of pure relief. That evil, conniving harpy and her worm son were just dealt their first major dose of karma today in family court and I had a sneaking suspicion there was plenty more divine justice still to come, all thanks to my brave little girl. 
My faith in her was rewarded a couple of weeks later during the next big pre-trial hearing, the first major custody arguments and rulings. Geraldine was snarling and gesticulating wildly as her lawyer argued I was an unfit parent with clear mental deficiencies who shouldn't be allowed unsupervised time with poor, pitiful Jenna. Your Honor, it's the sad truth that my client's soon-to-be ex has become completely unmoored from any sense of reason or reality, the shriveled, reptilian little man droned on in that trademark soulless attorney's drone. Her increasingly unbalanced condition poses a clear danger to their daughter's well-being. I braced myself for impact, ready for whatever ridiculous fabrications and lies they tried twisting to discredit my mental state and mothering abilities. But Donovan just checked his watch, seemingly unfazed. Better tee it up quickly for your deranged rants, he muttered under his breath beside me, because you're about to get shut down hard in about thirty seconds. True to his prediction, the judge held up her hand after only a couple more minutes, silencing Geraldine's screeching monkey lawyer mid-sentence. With all due respect, counselor, I've presided over more than enough of these custody battles to see through most of the traditional mudslinging ploys, she said, voice cutting, and sharp. So unless you have some hard evidence to present substantiating this, doozy of a claim about the mother's incompetence, I'd suggest you wrap it up. Geraldine audibly ground her teeth beside her attorney, her face flushed puce with rage, as he began stammering and shuffling through his notes fruitlessly. But the judge was already moving on, making some notes before clearing throat again. Now then, based on the overwhelmingly positive testimony from teachers, child care workers, medical professionals, and others in regards to Mrs. Wilkins' ability as a devoted and caring parent, as well as the extremely disturbing recorded statements from Mrs. Miller referring to the child as that brat and other unsavory language. She leveled a hard stare at a suddenly pale, sputtering Geraldine before continuing. I am issuing a preliminary ruling, fully maintaining Mrs. Wilkins' full custodial rights over the couple's daughter Jenna for the time being, while these divorce proceedings play out. Visitation rights for Mr. Miller will be restricted and requiring a professional supervisor until I've had a chance to more thoroughly review additional evidence regarding his personal fitness and legal culpability. It was like the entire room had been struck by a colossal shockwave. Geraldine's mouth opened and closed wordlessly, looking ready to detonate as her lawyer patted her arm in a fruitless attempt at comfort. Beside me, Donovan was doing a little celebratory fist pump, beaming like a lottery winner. I could only just sit there in stunned silence, trying to process this first big victory after months of anguish. But then I saw my sweet Jenna in the aisle, radiant and glowing, and giving me a double thumbs up of support, and the stranglehold of tension utterly released inside me, washing away in a tidal wave of pure relief. That evil, conniving harpy and her worm son were just dealt their first major dose of karma today in family court, and I had a sneaking suspicion there was plenty more divine justice still to come, all thanks to my brave little girl. Chapter 8. Karma's Gavel Despite the damaging preliminary custody rulings against them, Bennett and Geraldine continued to posture and bloviate right up through the final official divorce and asset division trial dates. "'You'll never get a penny from me, you money-grubbing snake!' Bennett hissed at me under his breath during a recess break, his eyes wild and jittery. "'Not after the emotional distress you've put me and mother through with this bogus smear campaign.' I barely dignified him with a sidelong glance having truly mastered rising above their desperate baiting tactics over these long months of mental warfare. "'Save your breath, dear ex-husband,' I replied coolly, straightening my blazer as I got ready to re-enter the courtroom. "'All your embarrassing whining does is strengthen my case further for full restitution as the blameless, aggrieved party here.' Bennett opened his mouth, no doubt to bellow some other unhinged protestation of innocence. But Donovan appeared at that moment— shooting him an ice-cold look that mercifully snapped his gaping maw shut. "'You really ought to listen to your client's advice, Miller,' he said with steel in his voice, "'because any further outbursts on record are only going to compound the legal punishments coming your way, as if you two idiots needed any more help burying yourselves.' With that, 
he steered me back into the courtroom with a hand on my lower back, away from Bennett's burning glare, before he could blow his lid again. The remaining days of testimony and evidence presentation were honestly a bit of a blur for me. I'd largely tuned out any dramatic out 